Hi everybody, this is Levi Clay and I'm back again to give you a, a little lesson on time and time feel and the subject of the metronome. Uh, I apologise for the audio quality of this. Usually, you know, I'd be recording everything slightly different, we get the guitar recorded properly, but I want to be able to bring in a metronome on the fly. So what I'm using for this is Google's metronome feature. I just go on Google, I type in metronome, there's a metronome there. We will come to what I was doing at the intro there towards the end of the lesson. That will really help your time feel. But yeah, for the most part this is talking about playing with a metronome. Now I should point out that I'm not a huge metronome guy. I've watched all of Jeff Berlin's stuff on the subject of metronomes and I, I, I understand what he's talking about. You know, Metronomes won't inherently help you develop good time. If you have bad time, a metronome isn't really going to help that. A metronome is just a great way of helping to measure how good your time is. But the actual improvement of time from there will come from within. You will have to work on that. When you look at the great, great rock musicians of our time that have great feel, and I'm talking like Motown guys, uh, funk guys, a lot of those guys didn't really practice with metronomes. Those early guys, those early blues and rock guys, they're not metronome guys. They've developed that sense of time by playing with people because time isn't necessarily a fixed thing. Anyway, so when looking at the subject of metronomes, there's two things that you really need to practice. One is playing in time. So what I'm going to do is put on a metronome now at 145 BPM and just talk about time in relation to the metronome and using it as a way of measuring how in time we are. So at 145 BPM, I'm hearing this click as being in time. One, two, three, four. 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 And against that, I can practice absolutely anything and use it as my measuring stick. So I could play quarter notes, literally on each beat. One, two, three, four. Of course, I went off the quarter note thing there very quickly, but that's the point. When you're playing in time, you should really, really feel it. Um, when you are comfortable playing with quarter notes on that, then you can work on playing eighth notes. So instead of one, two, three, four, we're subdividing the B. I can practice playing one and two and three and four and. I'm just going to play a scale for this. One and two and three and four and. whatever it is you happen to play, you know, anything's going to be fine there. And then of course I could do the same thing with triplets, that's going to be a bit harder at this speed, but hearing one ender, two ender, three ender, four ender. It's very tricky. long runs of triplets like that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, usually I use them to kind of add a little bit of flavour to my playing, a bit of speed, uh, but just taking a three note string scale is going to work on that. Or pentatonics. practicing something like that. You're really just learning to feel that subdivision. Now this is all well and good and nothing here is new to you. What I'm going to encourage you to practice is the art of playing with a metronome on beats two and four. Now this puts you a lot closer to that jazz feel and this is it's crazy to describe this because I was explained this many times when I was younger and I really wish I'd listened because you know, you're young, you think you know better. I would listen and watch Joe Pass play and you could see very visually, he would count in his pieces 
one, two, three, four. He would tap his foot on one, two, three, and four. So I was very much of the opinion that if Joe Pass is tapping on one, two, three, and four, it's absolutely fine. And I remember watching Emily Remmer's video and her teaching this, you know, how to count in with a metronome one, two, and four and getting used to that feel. And really, in all honesty, it took me a very long time to get this feel. But what, So what I'm going to do now is show you exactly what Emily shows you on her instructional video. Uh, it's a hot legs video, worth checking out. When we have a metronome like this, it's important that we're not feeling it as one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What we actually want to do is start hearing the metronome as beats two and four. Now this is where a snare drum would fall when playing most backbeat, most rock music, jazz music, that's our backbeat where the, the snare is playing on uh, two and four. So what you need to do in order to get that feel down is listen to this click and say out loud two and four. Two, four, two, four, two, four two, four, over and over and over. And then you intersperse that with one. So two, four, two, four, two, four, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That in itself is the exercise. That's your first exercise. Don't worry so much about playing anything on the instrument at this stage. If you do, I used to do this myself, what I found happened very quickly was I started to shift the metronome click in my head so it was actually one and three. Three, one, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And really, if I vocalize it without the metronome, that's what we're getting at here, the difference between one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. You know, so I'm accenting the one and three. If I do that on the other, on the two and four, you'd have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's a subtle difference, but it's worth practicing. Now, the thing that really helped this come uh, into my head and really get, be able to hear this was actually like the gypsy jazz type rhythm. <laughs> Now, when you spend enough time hearing those rhythms, a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you start to get a feel for this accent being on beats two and four, and that, that guys, is your goal. So being able to put a metronome on at any speed, let's go for 80 BPM, that'll do. So realistically, this is double the speed, this is 160, but the metronome's only clicking at 80. So I hear my pulse, two, four, two, four, a one, two, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now to practice against that, what I would recommend is the Charleston rhythm. So the Charleston rhythm would be where you play on beats one and the and of two. So you'd be playing one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four. Now I'm playing with a swing feel. So da 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 Good rhythm to practice. I'm doing those both with downstrokes. But I really need to place that on this beat, right? Two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, I'm not going to lie, that's, I mean, at this stage feels very, very easy for me, but that is something that is going to take time to develop. Now, why are we doing this? Why does this actually help? This is what was never really explained to me when I was younger. You see, the difference between playing with a metronome on beats one, two, three, and four versus playing with a metronome on beats two and four is when you're playing with a metronome on every beat, 
you're really just using it as a measuring stick. Like I say, it's just there. When you play with it on beats two and four, there's a lot more space. So it enables you to push and pull your lines a little bit more, but more importantly, you don't feel like you're playing over the top of the metronome. You feel like you're playing with the metronome. You really start to feel like the metronome is providing some sort of groove, some sort of accent, because it really is. It's putting a heavy accent on beats two and four when you're practicing. And that is something that cannot be understated. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play it again. And we'll play some simple, in fact, I'm going to slow it right down. Let's put it at 50. So it's something, like I say, you need to spend a lot of time really getting this feel, but I cannot recommend it enough. When I was doing that improvisation, I could play for hours, honestly. I put a metronome on like this and just play and play and play. And it's about finding space and allowing that, that click, that metronome click to help you swing. So how, how better to close up this lesson? Because I do appreciate that this is, this is a... <laughs> I'm going to use the term esoteric and I don't think it's quite right here because it's not really it's not esoteric but it, it, it's it's unquantifiable it's something that you will listen to me now and you'll say you're talking rubbish Levi this can't help your time feel Wayne Krantz doesn't need this to have good time feel but I promise as a swing player the longer you play with this metronome on 2-4 the better a sense of that accent you're getting and as a reminder it's all going to come from that if I tried to play gypsy jazz and go It's not right, it has to be. You have to have that heavy accent on two and four, and that's the goal here. So I'm just gonna boost it up to 100 BPM again, and let's see what happens. in there somewhere.
There's a, there, there are keys in there somewhere. Let's just abandon it. So yeah, and cause that metronome. So some atrocious improvising there, <laughs> those things happen. Um, but really all about groove. And if you watch that back, what you're gonna notice is really I'm I'm trying to dance as much as I can with that click and feel that it's it's the thing I am playing with rather than just being something that, uh, that exists. So um, yeah, don't be like me guys, play the right notes. <laughs> uh, finally, I just wanna say a huge thank you to these people over here. These are some of my supporters over on patreon.com. They keep these videos coming to you. In fact, this video was requested by Patrick. He's one of my $20 heroes. Um, you know, if you support me in that tier, you get to request videos that I make, which is cool. Um, you can support us actually for as little as one dollar, and that gets you access to my private, private, patron-only Facebook group. Lots of lessons and discussions and things happening in there. And yeah, those guys are awesome. They keep shaping my content. So um, if you want to be like one of those people, you can check me out on Patreon by clicking this button up here. You can subscribe by clicking this button down here. And you can check out two more of my videos here and here. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please do let me know in the comment section below. Hit that like button, share it with your friends, and I will see you for another video again soon. Much love, guys. Bye.